it's the summer of 2022 as this made my first what i eat in a week video because a i love consuming food and b i too love consuming food online so why not produce it i guess by which i mean that ever since i was a little kid i would love watching shows videos etc that people cook and eat um that was my hobby when i was younger which turns out is not your um average job with the internet can do all the things that it can do in online i just happened to be a post with an internet kid who was actually making much of money so then i started to dig deeper why was i so obsessed with food quote unquote food content what is the purpose of producing it do i consume it for entertainment for learning do I produce this content mindfully? Do I share the whole story behind my food choices? Hence the series. For this episode, I will largely be diving into the concept of food online, but in future apps, we will talk about the problems with vegan evangelism, the case for sustainable eating, food justice, and food choice news more in depth. Until then, let's talk about why what I eat media and food content on social media is just so freaking popular. Food is a site for learning about different living experiences, about different cultures. A single plate can tell us a lot about a person, their values, their history, and their work. For me, I'm just naturally inquisitive about what other lives look like and i like the sense of sharing culture that comes with watching what other people eat i'll be making a co another complete video dissecting the relationship between food and culture specifically but to bring up the issue of the online manifestation of food culture and cultural food here's a question to ponder over what kinds of food are largely or what kinds of foods are largely represented in this kind of media and why is it that largely all of these what i eat in a week videos tend to look uncannily similar well in my opinion the answer to that is a bizarre trickery of the algorithm westernization and the homogenization of diet culture <laughs> of course while consuming content about food may help us learn about other cultures or find new meal ideas or teach us how to cook or give us a sense of shared culture. All too often, food content perpetuates the idea that everyone eats and needs to eat similarly. Unknowingly, we tend to be influenced by a sense of this is the right kind of food and that's the wrong kind of food. This happens in real life too, but as we know, the internet and social media try, tend to conflate and amplify whatever we experience in real life. While there are many niche creators trying to showcase their real life through what they really eat, it's hard not to be influenced by social media trends and larger social trends, um, particularly pertaining to certain notions of health. What's popular is mistaken for what's good for you, resulting in a diet culture that threatens to acculturate everyone's diverse reality. I personally tend to watch videos of either really lazy or very experimental meals. And I have, over time, carefully curated the creators who create this kind of content in order to protect my own sanity and personal relationship with food. Because we all know that reality and social media content have a knack for distorting each other. And it's difficult to enjoy food content without accidentally watching something that triggers um, a sense of, well, we'll get to it later. But even from the producing point of view, from the producing food content point of view, it's really difficult to really, really portray what you actually do and eat. The creator, Amanda Mariana, has a really good video essay on online authenticity in general. But I think the key idea with reference to food is that there are a lot of different things affecting how and what we eat. Things like family, cultural history, our intersectional identities, location, access to certain foods, personal preferences, work schedules, and of course, to a large extent, the kind of media that we consume. 
but it's imperative to remember that the pers that the people who are able to share their meals online, those who are able to create this kind of content, often come come from a certain background and positionality, which leaves out certain foods or people who don't have digital access, or who don't want to share what they eat, or who the algorithm ignores. So essentially, the food content that we watch cannot be generalized. Um, we, I mean, even each of us, we are in our own little social media bubble, right? So we don't really learn a lot about the true expanse of what food can constitute. So in general, you can't really generalize things like ingredients, procedures, and recipes, because again, everyone's um, relationship with food and positionality with food is so different. In a sense, what I eat as a trend kind of supports this idea because unlike recipe videos, the what I eat video intends to show what one person happens to eat realistically in a day and just like shares one one person's experiences as an individual rather than um, trying to tell you what to do, which is what a recipe does. But um, it's not supposed to be a carefully curated and intricately designed recipe, right? But guess what? The line between um, what we show, what we portray as realistic eating, and um, intricately designed recipes are kind of blurred. Even for one person, each day and each week looks different. And rarely, um, what we actually eat as creators of such content is what we happen to eat every single day. Things change a lot. and again, depending on various factors. But even for one person, each day and each week looks different. And one can't really accurately describe one's cultural significance, relationship with food, um, reasons for food choices in a um, video. You can't explain all of this stuff, tell the stories behind your food choices and provide context in a short 15 to 20 minute video, much less in a one minute reel or short. I think it's just important to critically evaluate all of the media we consume and understand the impacts it has on us culturally, psychologically, and socially. And to me, food media is a large part of the media I consume and produce in general. So I really want to introspect it. Back to the point. There's already been a lot of discourse about the negative implications of what I eat media, particularly in terms of its tendency to give way to disordered eating, which I think goes deeper than just what I eat videos. Digital culture is built on this idea of comparison. We are constantly comparing ourselves to other people and what I eat just happens to hit that sensitive spot because for food sits at so many intersections and the digital world is also influenced by so many different things. In some ways, the content we choose to produce and create is inevitably industrialized, sitting in the nexus of the food industry and the big tech industry. Once it goes out into the internet, food is no longer just nourishment and culture, but rather a template for comparison, fueled by ahem, ahem, capitalism. I feel like I throw that word around way too much, but everything is related to it, anyways. And of course, we're all influenced by everything, perhaps even positively, with the rise of social media trends like body neutrality and intuitive eating, both of which may not be trends, both of which may not even be social media trends. Um, but both ideas are also equally criticized and both ideas also have their own issues. But for me overall, I think food media, um, though not over, not like, I can't generalize it as either positive or negative, but food media in general, I think has helped me come to terms with my own history with food and opens up avenues for the future, I guess, or something cliche like that. But my point is, it's really difficult to really conclude what food media is exactly. And, um, huh. To be honest, this whole video has puzzled me. It took like three weeks to write it because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to talk about exactly. But the idea of something as personal, cultural, and self-nourishing as food becoming subject to a whole new world of influence grass a uh, lanternet is an interesting one.
food media does have the sense of normalcy that comes from the aforementioned commensalities that reassures the self, the whole self, or that is rather supposed to reassure the self, the whole self. It's hungry parts, inquisitive parts, it's uncomfortable parts, it's memory parts. In a way, food media needs to be just as nourishing and wholesome as actual food in terms of being an authentic and healthy representation rooted in culture, farming, cooking, anything. And honestly, all of us need to stop comparing what we eat because there's no one size fits all and all our bodies will be different even if we all force ourselves to eat the same. The only thing that will achieve is a loss of collective culture, a loss of our personal body image and just a sense of self. But hopefully what I eat can just, what I eat in general as a concept or the concept of sharing food online can subvert this culture, can reassess and reposition um, the whole idea of individuality um, and collective culture as a place, as a concept situated within food and uh, within the diversity of food. And there are so many things to talk about when it comes to food. And yeah, um, what are my closing thoughts on this whole topic? Well, it tends to leave one just as unsatisfied as after watching a food video because it's just so large, it's so inconceivable. The internet is so big and food on the internet is even bigger. And quite frankly, there's nothing like actually eating the food, um, consuming food online, all right, but food media, does give me a lot of joy because of the aforementioned points of discovering something new but actual real food is just a whole nother thing and whether or not food media actually helps us improve our relationship with actual food is a question left unanswered an uncooked recipe for hungry souls